This is lesson number four in Algebra 2, Distributive Properties, Solutions of Equations, and Change Sides, Change Signs um, lesson. We're going to start out with the distributive property. You've used this in Algebra 1, um, so it should be review for you that if we have something like this, that means that we take the 3 times the x and then the 3 times the 3. So we get 3x plus 9. We distributed the 3 to each of the terms in the parentheses. And that's what we're going to be doing in this. Only we're going to be giving you some that are um, not harder as much as they are just a little bit more complicated. Does hard equate with complicated? Anyway, so we're going to put 4a squared over b. And this is example 4.1 b to the negative 2 over a to the 4th. Get familiar with the negative exponents because you will see them forever. 3ba over a squared. Alright, so what we're going to do here is we're going to ignore the negative exponents right now um, because we're not combining anything. We're not trying to solve for a variable. We're just expanding. Now remember if there is not an equal sign in the problem that they give you, they're not looking for a solution. They're not trying to get you to find out what A equals or B equals or X or Y. All they're trying to do is to get you to simplify things. So if there's no equal sign, you're not finding what the variable is. You're just simplifying. In that case, sometimes you just leave the negative on there until you get to the point where, okay, now I've done everything I can, now I need to get rid of the negative to see if I can do any more. So in this case, we're not going to worry about that negative. We're going to distribute this whole thing times this whole thing and times this whole thing and see what we get. All right, so 4a squared times b to the negative 2. We don't, you can't do anything except just combine those. You can't multiply a squared times b to the negative 2 and get something. They just get squished together there. And the same with your bottom. We have b a to the fourth. Can't do anything with that. Now we're going to multiply this whole thing times this whole thing. We bring the sign with it because this is going to be a positive times a negative, which is going to give you a negative there. And we multiply 4 times 3 is 12. We have an a squared times a, which means you add your exponents. And the b doesn't have anything to hang out with, so it's just going to stay the way it is. And we're going to put that over a squared b. All right, so now again... Um, just from the last lesson when we were, I was helping you with the problem set. We can cancel within terms because we have a division sign. So we can cancel stuff. Okay, so let's do that. I have two a squareds here and an a to the fourth here. So I'm going to get rid of these two and get rid of two of the four of these. All right, now the thing that sometimes causes a little bit of grief is I have negative two of these and I only have one of these. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take this, because this negative means it's in the wrong place. I'm going to take this b squared, and because it says b squared is in the wrong place, I'm going to move it down. I'll put it in white here. So I'm going to move the b squared down, and that means it goes away up here. Now b squared times b is b cubed. So let's see, I'm going to rewrite what that one term here. We got rid of everything on the top except the 4 b squared times b is b cubed, and I took 2 away from my a to the 4th, so that leaves me with that. All right, I'm going to do the same thing over here. Uh, the 12 is going to stay as is. I have 3 a's and 2 a's here, so I'm going to get rid of 2 down here and 2 of these 3 here, so I can cancel. So that, and get rid of that, and I have 1 left. And my B's, I have one on top and one on bottom. I'm going to make them both go away. So I have 12A. I don't have anything on the bottom at all. So now I'm left with this here. 4 over B cubed A squared minus 12A. And I'm done because I can't combine this with this because this isn't a fraction. 
so I can't bring these two together here. All right, let's look at 4.2. It gives us a to the negative 3, b to the 0 over c times a squared bc over c squared minus 3a to the minus 2 over b to the minus 2. All right, so right now what I'm going to look at is I have a 0 on my b. Anytime you have a, an exponent of 0, this thing is 1. So that means that I can actually make this go away because it's just a 1, and it's 1 being multiplied by a to the negative 3. So it can go away. It doesn't even affect anything we have. Whenever you see that 0 there, if it's being multiplied, if something with an exponent of 0 is being multiplied by something else, just make, make it go away. So now I'm going to distribute the a to the negative 3 over c times this here a to the negative 3 times, all right, so I'm going to write this out because I want you to see this, all right, a to the negative 3 times a squared b c over c squared. Okay, so we're going to multiply those together, and then in a minute we're going to multiply that times that. So let's multiply the first, um, the a to the negative 3 over c times this first term um, first a to the negative 3 times a squared. Remember, what do you do with exponents when you're multiplying them? You add them. So a to the negative 3 plus 2 would be a to the negative 1. Negative 3 plus 2, take the difference between the two. The difference between 3 and 2 is 1. Put the sign of the largest one on there, and you get the negative 1. If you follow that format, you will always get the right answer. And then we have bc following, because there's nothing to multiply that by. c times c squared, add the exponents, and you get that. All right, so we just distributed to the first term. Now let's distribute the second term. So let's take this times this. We'll put a minus sign there for that. And let's just write that out here. I'm going to write it out in blue. So we have a to the negative 3 over c times 3a to the negative 2 over b to the negative 2. So I'm going to multiply those. I know I'm just going to get a 3 because this is a 1, so 3 times 1 is 3. And now I've got a to the negative 3 times a to the negative 2. Remember, we add the exponents. So when the signs are the same, you add the numbers together and put the sign on it. And that's going to be over c times b to the negative 2 is going to be that. All right, so now the next question is, is there anything that I can cancel in this first term? Yes, there is. I can cancel 1c with one of these c's, and I'm left with 2. Anything anywhere else that I can cancel? Nothing on top. I mean, all the variables on the top, the A's and B's, and the C, A's, or A's, B's, and C's, and the A's, B's, and C's on the bottom, there aren't any that are similar. I've got an A here and a C, B here, so I can't cancel anything there. An A, B here and a C here, can't cancel anything there. That's as far as I can go. I'm done. So, not too bad there.